All right, let's go through some files. So we have a few different files that we use here, but some are going to be by hand and some are going to be via rotary. So let's start off with the hand ones because those are probably the easiest to go through. And they're all contained in this cup right here. So this is kind of how we arrange them. You, your hand files are going to come in three different lengths and there's different sizes. So there's going to be a lot of numbers associated with them. So hand files come in 21 millimeters, 25 millimeters, and then these big guys over here are 31 millimeter long files, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the length of them. In general, we're going to use 21 millimeters for pretty much everything because most of the time our teeth are anywhere from around like 18 to 20 millimeters long. And more importantly, when you have um, a shorter file like this, it's actually easier for me to use because the longer it is, the more it's going to flex, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. And so generally, I'm going to be using the shorter files. However, I always get length from the comb beam before we get started. And so I'll tell you beforehand if it's going to be longer, and then we'll need to grab those longer files. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple different types of hand files that we use. The first ones are what are called K files. Okay. K files, going back to that Finding Nemo joke that we talked mm -hmm. about, <laughs> um, they have a triangular cross section. And those, um, we have a few different types. But in general, the K files that we're going to be using the most on most cases is this one, which is a 20K file. Okay. And I use that to take sealer down as well as to clear if it's like a finish of a um, one that we've done calcium hydroxide on. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to use this 25 millimeter 10K file. And I use this to get length. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when you see a K file, what this means is that there are a couple of things about it. Most importantly is the taper. So every file is going to have two numbers associated with it. Your first one is going to be the size at the tip. And the second one is going to be the taper. All of these are in one hundredths of a millimeter. So a 20K file is 20 one hundredths of a millimeter at the tip, and it has a 0 0.02 taper. What that means is it starts at 20, and for every one millimeter you move up, it gets wider by 0 0.02 millimeters. Okay, So 20, then a millimeter up, it'll be 22, at two millimeters up, 24, 26, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions about that so far? So far, no. Beautiful. We also have what are called C files. Oops. So C files are similar to K files. They still have that triangular cross section. Mm -hmm. They're just naturally stiffer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what I did is the six, eight, and 10, your pink, gray, purple, mm -hmm. those I just get in C files to begin with because the K file ones, they're so stinking skinny at the tip. They're, they're, they have no stiffness whatsoever. And what's the point of it at this point? So mm -hmm. the only C files that we use are six, eight, and 10. Okay. The, that's pretty much the difference. They're just stiffer. Now I will call them out and usually say, I need an eight C or I need a 10C or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. versus I'll say a 15, we only have that in a K file. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. So same taper on these. These are also O2 tapers. These are also O2 tapers. Cool. All right. Any questions there? Mm, no, not so far. Perfect. And then just in general, hand files are used to remove debris from the... Hand files are used for everything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're, that's, they're kind of like your workhorse. Mm -hmm. um, when you learn how to do root canals initially, they actually teach you with hand files. You, you don't use rotary files whatsoever. Oh, that's like okay. the first root canal that everybody does in dental school is all by hand. And it takes forever and it makes you hate endo. And that's why nobody wants to go into <laughs> endo. And this is the sad story of my life. Um, <laughs> but what we use it for, my order in general is going to be, Oh gosh, I'm moving everything. Hopefully the camera can still see that. The order that I like to do things in is we start with an 8C. And what that does, if we imagine that kind of this right here is the canal. All right, so here's your canal inside the tooth. Mm -hmm. The 8C, when we have calcified cases, they don't, it doesn't like calcify like this. The calcifications are usually like these little bumps in this area. Okay. Mm -hmm. And 
That, if you try to put a rotary file down there, it's way too big and it's going to hit one of these bumps. And that's actually how you cause ledges, which are one of the main things that I have to fix when I redo other people's root canals. So what you do with the 8C is that actually starts the process and creates what's called a glide path. Mm -hmm. And then we go to the rotary files, which we'll talk about in just a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then the rotary files now have a path to follow down, and then they actually do the bulk of the shaping of it because it's far more efficient to have something to have a machine do it than my mm -hmm. hand. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. The final hand files that we use are what are called headstrums. These do not have a triangular cross section. They actually have a teardrop cross section, which is what the um, Pufferfish was getting upset about. He was actually correct in the movie, in case you're wondering. So <laughs> these, you'll actually feel when you pull them out of here, do you feel how hard it is to pull that out? Mm -hmm. Okay, you'll, you'll, you, can, yeah. you can see at least. They have a completely different cross-sectional shape, and you can actually see that if you look at them. So notice how they almost look like a spiral. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, and see how it spins around? Mm -hmm. These work in a pulling motion. Mm -hmm. These work in a pushing and spinning motion. So headstrums are really good for removing things from the canal. Mm -hmm. I use it to remove gutta percha. I use it to remove um, thermophil carriers. I use it to remove broken files, um, pulp stones. So many different things you can do with headstrums. I really like using them. I probably use them more than the most endodontists. <laughs> so um, but that, those are in this upper left-hand corner. And these come in different sizes, but we just have them in 21 and 25 mm -hmm. millimeters, okay? All right, grab that little box out of this here. We do have one more section of hand files that we use, and we keep these separate because I don't really use them too, too often. These are called C plus files, okay? These still are triangular. Great triangular, Scott. Um, they're still in 6, 8, 10. They're still in 21 and 25 millimeters. The difference here is twofold. Number one, they're even more stiff. Most of our files here are actually blunt at the tip. Mm -hmm. These actually have a cutting tip. And they're an O3 taper instead of O2. I use these on really calcified cases or if I've hit a wall and I almost need to create my own canal. These, you can get in there as long as I can get a stick, these will be more effective at opening up really, really calcified teeth. I use them maybe once or twice a week. It's not super common. That's why they're in the drawer over here and not in the main caddy because we don't really use them that often, but it is important that you know them. And what I will ask for is a like 6C plus mm -hmm. or an 8C plus. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of all the hand files that we use. Any questions about that? Mm, none so far. Fantastic. Okay. Let's go to the rotary files now. So rotary files, the major difference is they spin. <laughs> <laughs> and these also come in different lengths. The ones we have are 21 millimeter, 25 millimeter, and then the edge ones that I have that are actually, that's, that's only 21. Where the hell are my long edge? <laughs> there we go. They're actually 29. Um, sometimes a, a couple different companies have them in 31s. These just happen to go up to 29 millimeters. So that's what we use for our very, very long teeth. We really don't use these at all. <laughs> I think I bought a pack or two when I opened the office in 2020. And three years later, we maybe used four files like it's not it's not super common so how these work is you're still going to have your size of the tip and the taper and it's still on one one hundredths of a millimeter but the main one that I use is a 1704 and a 2006 so 1704 and 2006 you'll notice with each company they do different coloring for the taper. Mm -hmm. There's also little stripes on here. It's a little tough to see. Sometimes they'll have stripes that are labeled. These just have two, because of course they do. Um, <laughs> like I said, each one's different. <clears throat> there isn't actually an ISO color for 17, because it's not a normal file you would get. Mm -hmm. So they just put make that one white. And how Brassler does it is the stopper color actually indicates the taper. So in this case, the gray is going to be 04. The black is 06, mm -hmm. okay? <coughs> Excuse me. And 
how these work is they, they're much more aggressive. So it goes 17, and then a millimeter of it's 21, and then it's 25, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. This is an 06 taper, so it's even more aggressive. So it's 20, and then 26, and then 32, et cetera, et cetera. Now, these are really nice because you can see how skinny they are. They actually start to go parallel after a certain amount. And I think it's once it gets to about 80, give or take. Um, and that's the nice part about these is they're a lot more conservative, so we can make really nice small shapes and not have to remove as much tooth structure. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll notice they're really flexible. That's actually on purpose. They do something with the metal, which is beyond the scope of what you need to know because no one cares about metallurgy. <laughs> and it makes them really flexible so you can go around corners. So if you see it like that, there's nothing wrong with the file when it's bent like that. That's, that's as it should be. Same thing with these. Very, very flexible in what you're able to do with them and get around corners, which means they don't remove as much tooth structure, which is great. So once we, let's get these files out of the way. Once we've made our glide path, then we use the rotaries. In general, I'm actually going to start off with the 2006. And I usually take that down about halfway. And what that does is if this is the total length of the canal, mm -hmm. it's going to start to create shape up here and remove all of this material. Mm -hmm. And what reason we do that before we even get length, like once again, I get the length from the cone beam, so that makes it a lot easier. But when you have a curve on a canal like this, so let's say the tooth looks like, you have a curve kind of coming in there like this. Beautiful root, Scott. You're just <laughs> such a great artist. Okay. So this is kind of what the tooth looks like. When you access in there and start to clean this out, your length is actually going to change because every time you take this down, you're going to gently straighten out that canal. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to kind of move from over here to over here. So that's one of the first things that I do. On really calcified cases, sometimes I'll use that 1704 after. And sometimes we'll go right to length. It kind of just depends. And the length is with that 25K or 25 millimeter 10k file for working length okay mm -hmm. then depending on the size of it most of the time i will just take the 1704 to length and that actually does the rest of the shaping all the way down here in the very bottom what you want to do is just create kind of a nice path that the gutta percha can then fill all the way down to the very bottom of the tooth mm -hmm. and so those are the Pretty much the files that we use, we still have in larger sizes. I actually have some files from Edge and over here. So we will bounce between when we use which ones, but the vast, vast, vast majority of the time, I try to keep things simple mm -hmm. and we're just going to be using these two. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are some other files we use for retreats. We'll talk about that when we go to retreats. But right now, the ones that you need to know are primarily the 8C, the 25 millimeter, where the hell did I write that down? 25 millimeter 10K file. And then these two rotaries. That, those are used on virtually every case, okay. except weird retreats and other stuff. But mm -hmm. there's always an exception in it. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then the final one I want to talk about is this funky looking guy here. This is called a Pac Mac. And it is shaped like a headstrom, but it's reversed. And the reason it's reversed is headstrums pull stuff out of the canal mm -hmm. and with this we actually want it to compact the gutta percha down inside the tooth mm -hmm. with the obturation technique that we use with the squirt fill it usually creates little voids inside the actual canal and this works really well to actually condense it back down this is very different too these files run in this mm -hmm. which maximum speed on this thing is 550 rpms i usually run these at 300 so these this is a very slow rotation the Pac Mac, on the other hand, runs in a slow speed that's air driven. <laughs> and that is at 20,000 RPMs. So, very, very different compared to this at 300 RPMs. And what that does is helps just condense the gutta percha down. Mm -hmm. And we use it on probably 80% of cases right now, would be. And I will always tell you if we are or are not going to use it, but mm -hmm. most of the time we use it there. So, those are pretty much all the files that we use. I have a bag from residency of random stuff that I'll grab every now and then, so you don't have to worry about knowing mm -hmm. those. And I have a collection of you know other stuff that we use here and there. But in general, this will get you about 80% of the way through most of our cases. So okay. what questions do you have? Um, I feel like you did a really good job explaining everything. Can you actually read my handwriting? That's the other oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can read it. Good. Uh, yeah, because I was really curious about what that meant, but when you were talking about yes, like the 20, the, yeah, the different, and that's, it, it's just a little bit easier because if I ask for a 20, 
well, am I asking for a K file? Am I asking for a rotary? Yeah. What size? So I try to be pretty good. The Not always that good, but I try to be pretty good about telling you it's going to be this size, this taper, so you mm -hmm. kind of know which one it is. But in general, it's going to be this order for almost everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. So, cool. No, yeah, that explained a lot. <laughs> good, good, good. I'm happy. So, and this will be available for you to watch too. Yes. <laughs> cool. Any other questions? Um, let's see. These are sharp. You gotta be careful with these. They're, yeah. I mean, they're not sharp as far as for the tooth, but they're eight one hundredths of a millimeter, which is mm -hmm. smaller than most needles. So it, they, they will stab you. You can get stuck in there. So be careful with them. Um, that's why we pass them back and forth in the sponge, so that mm -hmm. I'm not gonna hand you like a file with a sharp edge. Mm -hmm. We always pass them in the sponge. Um, these are dull. As you're not gonna stab yourself with those. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the the K files, especially those C plus K files, are a little bit sharp. So you gotta be careful mm -hmm. with those. But okay. Any yeah. other questions? No, and the life cycle of these is just you know, oh, good uh, one, one, yeah, one, yeah, one, just yeah. thought throw them. Yep, yeah. yeah, it's the amount of savings that you'd get by reusing it is so little compared to the hassle of if it breaks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, larger, larger files like the some of the retreat ones, you could hang a picture frame with those, so they're gonna actually get dull before they actually wear out. So um, sometimes we'll reuse those, but not that often. But for these, just toss them. Uh, and on really calcified cases, you'll actually see we go through a bunch of these. All mm -hmm. have to go like six, eight, ten, six, eight, ten, mm -hmm. and we'll go through them. And as soon as they start to wear or get bent, they're not useful anymore, mm -hmm. and they just get tossed. That's why I have that little cup next to my um, yeah. cart, and because I just throw them okay. in there. That way, I don't have to hand them back to you. And so it's a way to be just a little more efficient. But there are cases where we will go through like this entire side will be empty. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not common, but we, we will have it where that will go through that many files for sure. Um, and then same thing with the rotaries, what you'll see, and I'll show you the next time um, it happens on a patient, They these are um, how they make these and how they make all these files, is they start off as a triangle and then they twist it. So that's twist how, it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, these are, imagine like a just a straight, you know, file that's mm -hmm. a triangle. They have a big machine that goes in and just twists these, and that's oh. how they're made. Some of them are ground, but most of the time they're just twisted like that. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when they start to wear too much, they twist back, mm -hmm. and you'll start to see. It's the easiest way to, to tell is you look under the microscope with that super bright light, mm -hmm. and it'll actually reflect back at you. Oh. Once you start to see that, generally that means there's been a lot of fatigue on the file, and there it's more prone to breakage. And at that point, you want to extract it. Mm. Or, not, sorry, not extract it. You'd want to you'd want to toss it. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. Any other questions? Um, These are all good questions. Yeah. See, I told you you'd need the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, I think I'm, I think I'm good. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, this is yours to keep and frame on the wall, and you know, <laughs> yeah, put it on the fridge and read it over. It you'll the, thankfully this most things in endo are very standardized, mm -hmm. and that's oh, that's the other thing I want to tell you is that color pattern holds true. Mm -hmm. So white, yellow, red, blue, green, black repeats. Okay, mm -hmm. you'll notice. Yellow is 20. Well, this is also a 20. Well, this is also a 20. Well, this is also a 20. This is also a 20. Actually, one of these is 50 because it's the headstrom. But they re they repeat back around, and you'll see that throughout the entire thing. Our posts are labeled like that. Mm -hmm. The tips on the alpha are also labeled like that. So the colors that you see match up. It's, they try to make it pretty easy so mm -hmm. that the colors match up. If you're colorblind, it's a little tough to tell the <laughs> difference between a couple of these. But in general, that's kind of how those all work. Mm -hmm. So. Cool. Oh, yeah. All righty. Yeah. Excellent. Pretty good. Okay.